Hey, good afternoon, everybody. If I could have all the genuine turn off their cameras and I could have everybody mute their microphones, please. All selectees, please turn on your cameras. If you're selecting and commuting, go ahead and keep your camera off. Welcome everyone to the US Navy Reserve Big J POW MIA Remembrance Ceremony. Each boat team will give a presentation on a POW MIA and highlight a section of the ceremonial table. We will begin with boat team one. As you entered the fantail this evening, you may have noticed a small table in a place of honor. It is set for one. This table is our way of symbolizing the fact that members of our profession of arms are missing from our midst. They are commonly called POWs or MIAs. We call them brothers and sisters. They are unable to be with us this evening, and so we remember them. Boat team one, you may begin your brief. Make sure you go off mute. Seaman First Class Ernest West joined the U.S. Navy from Polk County, Iowa. and was assigned to the USS Oklahoma. At the time, it was moored at Fort Island, Pearl Harbor. On December 7th, 1941, Japanese aircraft attacked Pearl Harbor. The USS Oklahoma, which West was on, sustained multiple torpedo hits, which caused it to caps quickly capsize. The attack on the ship resulted in the deaths of 429 crewmen, including West, who was 22 at the time. West was reported missing and ultimately declared dead on April 7, 1945. His remains were recovered from the ship following the incident, but it could not be individually identified. Seaman First Class West remains were buried as unknowns at the National Memorial Cemetery at the Pacific in Honolulu, Hawaii, which is also known as the Punch Bowl. In 2015, advances for in forensics prompted the re-examination of unknown remains associated with the USS Oklahoma, leading to the identification of Seaman First Class West through a DNA match from his 101-year-old sister. West's name was recorded on the walls of the missing at the Punch Bowl, along with the others who are missing from World War II. A rosette will be placed next to his name to indicate he was accounted for on March 6th, 2019. Seaman First Class West was buried September 20th, 2019 in Little Rock, Arkansas. Some of Ernest West's uh, medals were Purple Heart, Combat Action Ribbon, World War II Victory Medal, American Campaign Medal, Navy Presidential Unit Citation, Navy Good Conduct Medal, Pacific Campaign Medal, Navy Expeditionary Medal. This includes our brief. We now turn it over to both team two. This table set for one is small, symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner alone against his oppressors. Remember, the tablecloth is white symbolizing the purity of their intentions to respond to their country's call to arms. Remember. The former Senator John Sidney McCain III was born August 29, 1936 in Panama. Upon graduation from the U.S. Naval Academy in 1958, he served until 1981. On July 29, 1967, he was aboard the USS Forrestal, and he was a survivor of that fire, which claimed the lives of 134 sailors. Then in October 26, 1967, in Operation Rolling Thunder, Commander McCain was uh, tasked with destroying a Vietnamese power plant in Hanoi, Vietnam. The enemy's defenses were strong, and his aircraft sustained severe damage. However, John McCain was able to control the aircraft long enough to be able to provide the bombs on target before crash landing his aircraft. 
Once his aircraft landed, he was captured and he became a prisoner of war. He was released March 14th, 1973. As a prisoner of war, he he saw brutal conditions. He met torture, multiple beatings, with an attempt by the enemy to gain military information or to use him as propaganda for their purposes. He resisted and he inspired his fellow prisoners to resist. He established and he maintained communications amongst all of his prisoners, and he also stepped up to become a chaplain to ensure they received spiritual guidance. He also educated them on constructive rehabilitative thinking. All this was so they could resist the enemy and to increase their morale. During his time as prisoner of war, he is awarded the Silver Star, the Legion of Merit, the Distinguished Flying Cross for that mission that crashed his plane, three bronze stars, and the Prisoner of War Medal. He retired from the Navy as a captain in 1981, and he entered politics. In Arizona, he was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives and later became the U.S. Senator. He ran for president in the 2000 and 2008 presidential elections, and he also wrote several books. Uh, one of Why Courage Matters is uh, one that I recommend reading. He was married twice and he had seven children. And then in, he was diagnosed with brain cancer and he passed away at the age of 81 years old on August 25th, 2018. This concludes our brief and we turn it over to Bo Team 3. Boat Team 3, if you're attempting to speak, you may be muted. Chief Select Spees, are you online? Hi, yes, I am. Sorry, I'm having trouble with my video. <clears throat> the single red rose displayed in a vase reminds us of the families and loved ones of our comrades in arms <clears throat> who keep the faith awaiting their return. Remember, the yellow ribbon tied so prominently on the vase is reminiscent of the yellow ribbon worn upon the lapel and breasts of thousands who bear witness to their unyielding determination to demand a proper accounting of our missing. Remember. On August 5th, 1964, Lieutenant J.G. Everett Alvarez Jr., an A-4 Skyhawk pilot with a squadron, with a squadron aboard the USS Constellation, was given an ocean target near the Vietnam-China border at Han Gai. Before he reached the bay, Alvarez signaled, 411, I'm hit, I can't control it, I'm ejecting. Captured in a Vietnamese fishing vessel when he landed, Alvarez became one of the first pilots to be shot down during the Vietnam conflict. And perhaps he was the longest held American prisoner in any war. We'll now be passing it on to boat team four. The candle. The candle is lit, symbolizing the upward reach of their unconquerable spirit. Remember, a slice of lemon is on the bread plate to remind us of their bitter fate. Remember, their assault upon the bread plate, symbolic of the family's tears as they wait. Remember.
Chief Warrant Officer 4, Michael J. Durant, United States Navy, retired. Chief Warrant Officer 4 is the recipient of multiple awards, including the Distinguished Service Medal, the Distinguished Flying Cross with Oak Leaf Cluster, the Bronze Star with Valor Device, Purple Heart, Meritorious Service Medal, three Air Medals, one with Valor Device, the POW MIA Ribbon, the Army Commendation Medal with three Oak Leaf Clusters, and various other awards. Born July 23, 1961 in Berlin, New Hampshire, he entered the United States Army August of 1979. Following basic training in AIT at the Defense Language Institute, he was assigned to the 470, 470th Mil Military Intelligence Group at Fort Clayton, Panama, as a Spanish voice interpreter. He was accepted and attended the Warrant Officer Basic Course, followed by primary flight training at Fort Rucker, Alabama. Upon his appointment to W01, he completed the UH-60 Black Hawk Qualification Course and was signed to the 377th Medical Evacuation Company in Seoul, Korea. He joined the 160 Special Operations Group August 1st of 1988 as an assigned to, comp to Delta Company. He performed his duties as a flight lead and standard instructor pilot. He participated in combat operations, Prime Chance, Just Cause, Panama, 1989, Desert Storm, Kuwait, 1991, and Restore Hope, Somalia, 1993. He is a master aviator, qualified in the UH Huey, MH6 Loach, MH60 Alpha, Lima, and Kilo models of the Black Hawk. He has a total of 3,700 flight hours, with over 1,400 of those performed under night vision goggles. During a UN humanitarian relief effort to distribute food in Somalia, the mission was jeopardized by guerrilla ambushes. As a result, the Army dispatched Army Rangers and a contingent of Delta Force commandos to find and capture a Somali militia leader. It was during this raid on October 3rd when he became a prisoner of war. When this battle ended, U.S. casualties would total almost 100 service members, including six Delta commandos dead. Two Delta sergeants, Gary Gordon and Randy Schwartz, were posthumously awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for their actions on that day. During this mission, he piloted the MH-60 Black Hawk in Mogadishu, Somalia, and was shot down and held captive by hostile forces. After being shot, he was awake, and he was awakened by pain in his leg, and he considered he was about to die. This story has been told through the reenactment of these events in the movie Black Hawk Down. Now, nearly 27 years later, he still regards his actions that day as simply doing his job. He now lives a quiet life with his wife, Lisa, and five children in Huntsville, Alabama, where he works in his family-owned company. And now I'll turn it over to both Team Five. The glass is inverted. They cannot toast with us tonight. Remember, the chair. The chair is empty. They are not here. Remember. Vice Admiral James Stockdale served from 1946 to 1978 in the U.S. Navy. He was born. He was born December 23rd, 1923 in Aberdeen, Aberdeen Illinois. He briefly went to Monmouth College in his home state before attending the U.S. Naval Academy. After graduating in 1947, he became a pilot. Over the next 15 years, he worked his way up the ranks and was sent to the Navy by the Navy to earn his master's degree in international relations at Stanford University. But he preferred flying over academics, so he went back to that when the Vietnam War began. By the late summer of 1965, Admiral Stockdale had already flown over 200 combat missions in his career, and on September 9th, he was on his third tour of duty, commanding the Carrier Air Group 16 on a mission over North Vietnam when his A-4 Skyhawk was shot down. He was ejected over a small village and was captured. Suffering from several broken bones, he was taken prisoner of war to the famously called Hanoi Hilton, which was known for his brutality. He was the highest ranking Navy officer POW in Vietnam and was held there for seven years. From the start, he refused to cooperate with his captors and he urged other POWs to resist. 
and he was taken back and frequently tortured. He spent two years in heavy leg irons and four years of isolation, but he didn't waver. He led the POW's culture of defiance, finding ways to communicate and govern prisoner behavior that gave them all hope. He became a symbol of resistance, and one of his most famous acts was cutting his own wrist, showing the enemy that he would rather die than tell them anything. While the enemy revived him, the act was credited with helping in the North Vietnamese use of excessive force toward POWs. <clears throat> he was finally released along with several other POWs in February 1973 during Operation Homecoming. And on March 4th, 1976, he received the Medal of Honor at a ceremony at the White House. Admiral Stockdale is the only three star to have worn aviator wings and the Medal of Honor. In 1992, he agreed to the request from Ross Perot to stand in as the vice president candidate of the Reform Party. And in 1979, the Secretary of the Navy established the Vice Admiral Stockdale Award for the inspirational leadership presented annually in both the Pacific and Atlantic fleet. We will now turn it over to the Master of Ceremonies. All of you who served with them and called them comrades who depended upon their might and aid and relied upon them, for surely they have not forsaken you. Remember, remember until the day they come home. Remember. This concludes our ceremony.